Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be jumping down into the charts to take a look at what has been going on with XRP and what I think is likely to happen next. As I get into this video if you do find it useful and informative hit the like button I really do appreciate that and uh, if you happen to be new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with all the XRP videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right um, with all of that said done and out of the way let's jump on down in to um you know the desktop here and actually take a look at xrp so uh, here we are with uh, xrp paired up on usdt the hourly chart and binance is our data source for this analysis and um, so the first thing i want to kind of do is just illustrate uh, or to us briefly talk about this five wave move coming down here um, essentially this is a big three three five move so it's a corrective abc it's not an impulsive structure to the downside um, and it is an abc that we are looking for and looking to track for now essentially what we have here is this abc coming down and i am expecting a big abc going up and we kind of see this also playing out down here and i'm going to get into that in a moment and then i expect us to pull right the way back down again as well um, as we finish off a c wave so for example I'm expecting this to be a big A wave down, a big B wave coming up, uh, probably up towards maybe 84. Um, there is a lot of resistance here, so we'll measure that out in a moment. Uh, and then, of course, a C wave that will come down. Okay, now all of this, this big ABC, will have all these noisy moves inside it, right? This bigger ABC or this A wave has an ABC inside it. That ABC inside it has a 335 structure. Um, and then we'll track the B wave up, currently looking like a 335 structure, some kind of pullback, and then maybe another surge up with the C wave. Um, so, without kind of confusing matters too much, um, basically we're just nesting inside all these different waves the structure that we're expecting to see and um, so i will actually put um i will actually put that one back there because i do want that one to stay um big abc right and um, so if we actually just hop up into our daily view uh, for a second here because what we are tracking is an elliott wave triangle um, and basically this is abcde okay playing out down here we're currently in the e wave um, i think we've done an a wave down we're getting the reversal for the b wave and then we've come that down into that low c wave to complete the e wave move here on the daily chart okay um, so that big ABC that I was just talking about, let me just zoom in here for a sec, um, basically comes in here. So we have the A wave that comes down, the B wave that takes us to about 84 cents, eh? uh, then a C wave that comes down lower. Okay, now the E wave doesn't have um, any predictive qualities about it per se. It can be short it can be long okay so um this e wave is very much um going to be uh, you know really really difficult to know exactly what's going on if you just look at it from an e wave you have to measure the sub wave counts to get an idea as to where it's actually going on with this e wave and where it is likely to land okay so i'll put it down here right on top of this trend line this is a trend line that we've got us stuck into this triangular wedge and but it doesn't mean it's going to go down uh, as low as that it's just an area that i think you know has a a reasonable chance of bouncing from okay once of course this plays out and we finish the e and we get confirmation of the e then we'll be tracking this bigger c wave move to the upside and that's obviously coming in about nine dollars 97 on a one-to-one -one ratio if i zoom on out here and um, basically the way that we've uh, measured this is the entire move up here okay goes into an a wave and the triangle that we're currently in is a b wave and then the c wave would come after now some people will be saying you know, or thinking, well, how do we know that that is what's going on? Well, it's quite straightforward, really. Um, a B wave um, here, so this B wave in the middle um, of the triangle, okay, this triangle pattern, I should say, right, this triangle, this can only appear in a wave four or a wave B, okay? They do not appear anywhere else. So when you have an Elliott wave triangle, you've got to look at everything that's going on here. Is it a B wave or is it a wave four? Right? It's only two places that you're gonna find that occurring. So we take a look at this A wave. Have we got an impulsive structure upwards that makes this a fourth wave? And no, we don't. We have a lot of overlap. We have a lot of corrective patterns going on here. And therefore that makes this an A wave, making this a B wave, making that a C wave, okay? So the C wave yet to come and the target of that comes in at nine dollars 97 and uh, the it's the common relationship between the a and the c so your a wave and your c wave uh 100 of your measurement of your a wave would normally be uh 100 of your c wave now it doesn't always play out this way um but it's kind of the one-to-one -one ratio that you would expect right so you measure the distance of your a wave here and then you go ahead and measure the distance of the c wave and you say that's approximately the area that you're aiming for sometimes you fall short Okay, the 786 is a good example of where you might fall short on. Sometimes you go higher, okay? Um, but typically, you most commonly would see this as a one-to-one -one ratio 
100% of your A wave is exactly 100% of your C wave, okay? And that's kind of what you would normally expect to see. Therefore, we can kind of say, looks like XRP is most likely going to be in that range uh, from a high probability perspective of $9.97. Okay, so with all that understanding and knowing what's going on on the larger time frames, we can now talk about what is going on right now on the hourly chart, okay? So when we get back down into this, uh, we can take a look at, obviously, what we know here is a big A wave with a bounce going up and then a C wave taking us down low into the E wave, right? Um, so we know that we've got to come down lower, really, um, realistically, um, but it could be possible that this is also the E wave and it's finished. So it's just a really short one. I just don't think that is likely to be the case based on the momentum of the price. And we'll go into that as well in a moment. So what's actually going on right now for XRP? Well, let me make this a little bit bigger. And what I will do is I'll just move that out of the way there and uh, we'll just jump into this, right? So uh, essentially, what have we got? Well, we've got an ABC structure coming up here and then we have some kind of ABC down and then some kind of ABC up and then another ABC down, right? Um, now, that's kind of what you're looking at in terms of these structures, right? However, we get this huge, huge push right up here. Um, so there's lots of different ways we can count it. And we want to start off by taking a look at these micro movements. What's actually gone on? We were pushed down, we bounced up, we pushed down, right? So ABC up, ABC down. Um, and then, of course, we have another a b c up here and then again we have another one that falls down and takes us into these lower ranges again we just come down with a b and c right so we can see that we've got a lot of choppy corrections right an a b c move is just a corrective short-term move um so let me just delete all that off right so we know that that's kind of what's going on there however we could also just say it's a bigger a b c move to the upside and we can save ourselves the trouble of doing all of those counts right and we kind of have it out like this right so a b c upwards then of course the a b c coming down and then we end up with this larger move going Going up right um, now obviously you know a lot of people might be thinking well it's an impulsive structure it's got a really good move up here and we might want to measure it from there for there and so forth and um, the problem with that essentially comes down to the fact that you would need to have uh, for impulsive structure a really good wave count of a five three five three five right um, and we're not really seeing that here instead you're seeing these overextended c waves now it is possible however um that this is a fourth wave and we're going to rally up again okay um and we'd have to take uh, this probably as our wave one uh, so wave one goes up and then wave two comes down and then wave three then wave four then wave five after right and um, so Let's actually take that and just see if that is actually going to play out. I don't think that is really a, a good, necessarily a good way of looking at it, but it is a possible scenario. So we move the ABC back to where it was, right, just up here. Okay, then we obviously map in our smaller ABC move. So we have a 3-3, three, three, right? And then we would look for five moves, right? A 3-3-5 three, three, is a common corrective pattern. So you'd end up with, a, actually if I draw the right thing, a 3-3-5. Three, three, five okay so three waves three waves five waves okay so that's a possible structure and it's a corrective pattern that would basically make the entire thing an abc right so we have a goes up b comes down c wave comes up that c wave would be over and over extension so we'll just go ahead and check um based on this point we're here we can see that we did actually move past the 1.618 so it's an overextended c wave and um, but that's kind of how you would look at it right so if i remove that larger play well when we start to map this out uh, we take this as a wave one a wave two a wave three a wave four with a wave five still to come okay um, now that's a five wave structure but not impulsive okay so we have to understand the differences between what would be classified as an impulsive structure now it could turn into an impulsive structure if we have three waves down and five waves up again and then another three waves down and another five waves up again okay so it is possible that we have um, a double correction like an abc and abc um, and then we move up into an impulsive structure it is possible it's just unusual um, but then again in crypto you would you know you have to accept there's going to be some kind of uh, volatility that's not going to line up perfectly with elliott wave um, specifically because we're not as liquid as the dow jones and you're not going to have that same kind of level uh, of accuracy with it now if we were to measure the distance on this recent correction uh, then we would put us up here so i'm going to quickly mark up our typical wave five area for a uh, push to the upside okay uh, and our fifth wave should land inside this so i'm going to go grab my price labels here and you'll be able to see the prices that this should then rally to okay so if we just grab that it's basically 80.59 and 81.94 okay that's going to be the area that we'll look for this fifth wave to finish and and, and totally what that will mean is it's a big abc structure with a 335 pattern of course it is also possible that from here we have an abc and of 
course we you know rally up with another five weights right it would be unusual though i wouldn't necessarily expect that to happen but it is a possibility okay and um, so on this smaller time frame what we're we talking about well we're talking about a rally up right we should be thinking upward directional numbers now when we bring the stochastic rsi into play we can see that we're correcting down so it could be that this actually hasn't finished playing out it looks like it actually has potential to pull back down a little bit lower in some kind of abc function okay and um, so let's draw that up uh, let me just get rid of that and uh, we'll do is we'll, we'll map out what might be on the horizon here uh, for xrp on the shorter time frame like they're really like probably by the time this video goes out it's playing out um, which will be um, a small abc just here right a b and then we come down to about 75.4 okay so coming down to 75.4 if that is the case our fourth wave would drop and if our fourth wave drops that low then so does our target um, it would actually move on up rather than dropping down because the lower the fourth wave goes the higher the fifth wave would go um, and then before we can just go ahead and move that up to its target range of 82.64 um, and the lower range would be 80.64 0.88 okay so we end up with that target there so um if we do rally up from where we are and we don't drop down then we had the original targets if however which i think is probably more likely we pull back down to a 75.4 then we'll actually rally up to between 80.8 and 82.6 cent within this fifth wave that's going to be the probable area and once that comes in you expect some kind of ABC correction, okay? Always an ABC correction after five waves up, unless, of course, this is a 335 structure, okay? So if this does actually plan out to be a 335 structure, then we could also acknowledge that this doesn't necessarily have to be an ABC move, um, but it could also be a five wave move down, right? Because again, uh, this is actually just an ABC and it doesn't really take into consideration the five waves that you see here. It's actually a C wave, okay? So we'll bear that in mind. Um, but for the most part, we should be enjoying a little bit of a push to the upside here on XRP. Uh, I do think we're going to probably come down to that 75.43 because Bitcoin also needs to drop. And therefore, I think we're probably in the range of about 7.26% uh, push to the upside before we see a major kind of correction. Now, on the daily chart, we're actually moving this up a little bit. I do think that's going to come back down a little bit lower um as we kind of think about bounces to the downside eventually but on the weekly we are needing to lower this down so we are talking about bringing this stochastic rsi down on the weekly and potentially on the uh, the daily as well and uh, the ranges that i have for this and uh, there's a lot of buying uh, support to be found just down uh, in the range of about 59 uh, all the way down to about 54 cents so that's going to be the range that i do think there's a high probability of landing by the time this e-wave finishes um, and then of course from there we should see an impulsive structure to the upside um, as usually that is what happens after an e-wave is complete within a triangle you find an impulsive structure to the upside uh, or downside depending on which way it goes um, but normally it's pretty uh, rapid once you get out of that triangle you you get a lot of buying pressure or selling pressure in either direction um, and in this case here it will be buying pressure because uh the pattern is a b wave going up right so essentially the c wave goes up and we should see an impulsive structure for that and um, so everything's looking pretty good for xrp obviously there's a lot that's uh, riding on the sec versus ripple that's going to be the the pretty much the thing that determines what goes on uh and how quickly we kind of rally out of this triangle um, up towards those areas there. Obviously, some fantastic news going on with uh, with Ripple and the SEC. And I think a lot of that stuff is going to come to conclusion soon. And I think that's going to be the major catalyst for bringing in $9.97. So, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. If you have found this useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done that out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.